Hey guys, it's Jedi Lex, and welcome to the eighth episode of Beyond Tatooine, where I bring on different collectors to talk about how their love of Star Wars originated, as well as take a look at and chat about their collections. And on today's episode, I have Will from the Padawan Pops channel. So how are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks for having me on. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing phenomenal. I appreciate you hopping on with me. Um, yeah, but course. for people who may not be following you, can you tell us a little bit about your channel, what you focus yeah. on, and where people can find you? Yeah, of course. So you can find me on Instagram at Padawan underscore Pops or on YouTube at Padawan Pops. Um, Instagram is a little bit more collection heavy. YouTube's a little bit of everything. It's collections when there's Star Wars on TV or on Disney Plus. I will talk about that. Theories, book reviews, pretty much everything there. Right now it's kind of a dry time, so it's a lot of collections as well. Gotcha. Well, we did get the Bad Batch trailer. So what yeah. were your thoughts on that? Because that's very exciting. Yeah, so the Bad Batch to me has been good. Mm -hmm. It's it's not like my top level Star Wars or anything like that. Season one I thought was great. Season two wasn't bad, but it wasn't amazing either. But this yeah. trailer has me so fired up. What about you? I, I've i been a fan of it. It's definitely not, like, one of my top ranking. Like, it doesn't outdo, like, Rebels or Clone Wars, yeah. but I definitely really enjoy it. But uh -huh. that trailer is, like, crazy. Like, the fact that we're getting a yeah. Saj, like, I literally went and mm -hmm. ordered the, like, Dark Disciples book so I could try to, like, yes. read that before. <laughs> so I'm definitely going to try to read up on that to kind of see what's going to play in. But, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm hoping maybe we'll get, like, some Quinlan Voss or kind of just mm -hmm. see what's, you know, transpired. But I'm definitely very excited about it. So. Yeah. I did the same thing this weekend. I, <laughs> I checked it out uh, from the library on audiobook. So I yeah. listened to about an hour yesterday. So I've got like 90% uh -huh. more of the book left. Yeah, a little bit left. Nothing crazy. <laughs> I got, but, I yeah. got time. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think it, it. the first few, we're getting like three episodes on the 21st. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it definitely looks, there were some big names. I mean, we got to see Wolf. Um, we got Fennec Shan, Cad Bane, like lots of big yeah. names in that like short amount of a trailer. So definitely mm -hmm. thoroughly excited for that. So. Yeah, we'll they did we'll great on the trailer. Yes, they did. It, it it definitely got me very excited. I was like literally talking, I think, with Tony last time. And I was like, we haven't gotten any updates. Like, we have no idea when any of this stuff is coming out. And they literally hit us with the trailer. And I was like, <laughs> yes. Like, thank God. I mean, I guess there's Bad Batch you're kind of excited about, you know. Mm -hmm. But is there any other project that's like supposed to be coming out this year that you're excited about? Like more than Bad Batch? Yeah. I mean, I, Tales of the Jedi, we know it's going to be good right like so i'm 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 confident that's the best thing we're gonna get but as far as like mystery goes it's probably the acolyte just because i mean that's a time period we haven't explored it's a dark side story so i would probably rank that as number one and then probably tales and then skeleton crew or vice versa and then bad batch probably it's my least excited but after the trailer i don't know maybe maybe not uh yeah, I think a lot of people are very excited for Acolyte. I feel like there's a lot of mystery around it, though. But I've heard, mm -hmm. like, speculations about, like, Darth Revan possibly yes. making an appearance. Like, that would be insane. So You know there will be something big in, in all of these series. There will be something. Yeah. So I'm excited. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to see what the Acolyte's going into entail. Because I feel like that and Skeleton Crew, I know very little about. Like, I don't know what to yeah. expect. Like, with Bad Batch, I kind of do. Or I did, and then we got the trailer. So now I know what's kind of coming. Mm -hmm, or, like, yeah. you know, a little bit of what's to come. Tales, as you said, absolute banger. I'm sure Season 2 yeah. is going to be phenomenal. But, like, Skeleton Crew and Acolyte, I feel like there hasn't been too much in regards to what it is. So I feel like it's still a mystery to me, but I'm definitely very excited for to like kind of just see new projects. I mean, for sure. no guarantee that they're going to be good projects, but it's just new Star Wars. <laughs> and, you know, I'm definitely excited about that. So eh, we'll yeah. see. There's nothing wrong when you Star Wars ever. So. <laughs> no, there's not. I mean, I'm, I'm excited that we're getting new stuff and we're not just getting repeats of certain things and they're just doing the same stuff. But I mean, you know, we're going to get some new stuff this year. And then we've got Ahsoka 2 in the works or season two mm -hmm. in the works. We've got the Mando movie. What are your thoughts yeah. on the Mando movie? I'm really excited. So okay. obviously they keep changing. Like, is it this or is it that? I'm glad we kind of have an answer now that it's going to be episodes leading up to the movie, I think is what they've decided. Right. Or is so. it the other way around? I don't know. Either way. Yeah. We're getting both. Right. We're getting a movie and the show. 
So a yep. little bit of best of both worlds, Star Wars on the big screen. I mean, Mando has been so good with a smallish budget compared to these movies. So imagine a Mando movie budget. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. I have like no idea what they're going to do with it, but hopefully we'll yeah. get like the Mythosaur. Some, oh, maybe yeah. like, I would love to see like further development. Like I know that I love Tiny Grogu and I know you love Grogu. You have like a bunch yeah. of his pops, but like I would yeah. like to see like, f- like a little bit further of his character. Like I want to see him with like the lightsaber or like wearing his armor. Like I feel like that'd be so cool to kind of see. So like hopefully yeah. it's like Grogu a little bit older and not just like in the pram the whole time, but. Yes. we'll see we'll see but definitely yeah, I'm, very I'm excited. With you there. yeah i mean yeah. i love him don't get me wrong like and i loved seeing him like in the pram but we've gotten a lot of that season one and two so you know and three so i'm kind of like mm, like maybe you know the episodes for season four if i if it isn't if i don't even know is it considered a season four i think so I think so. Okay, so I mean, hopefully there's like some further progression of him, but I mean, it's supposed to tie everything in together, so it'll be I'm I'm definitely very excited for it. Well, and also it's kind of a tangent, but we're going on 6 by the time this comes out, it will have been 6 years of baby Grogu. Like let's move it on a little bit. I think he's cute. I'm all about him, but like yeah they've lumped him in with a bunch of humans that aren't going to live very long. So it'll be interesting to see how they figure that out for him to age. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it would be interesting to see like him age a little bit. Cause I know like with Yoda, like he's still like, he's been around for a while. So I don't know like really what the years, time yeah. frame. Yeah. Like what's the time frame for him? Like if you do age him, like how, like for him to become a Jedi theoretically and like be like really force sensitive, how would that like how much further down the line would that be for him? Like I yeah. I don't know like their he's species like fifty three ish now so yeah and he's still like just me a baby. <laughs> like yeah like you know he doesn't even really like talk like he's he's not wise as Yoda is yet right yeah I'll be interested to see how they figure that out I'm sure they will oh I'm sure I mean. In Filoni, I trust. So hopefully it'll just be <laughs> phenomenal. I have no doubts. Whatever project he's working on going forward, I'm definitely very excited about. Have you talked yeah. about the Ray movie yet or anything? I know that like I saw yeah. that, like maybe a wrench got thrown in that for a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, me and Kevin talked about it the other day. Um, I want to say... So what I saw most recently is like some people say, oh, it's on hold. And then another report was like, well, no, it's not on hold. So I don't know. Disney will put something out at some point. I'm pretty excited about it because we can like take her and get her out of the Skywalker story per se. And maybe like whatever builds up with this Ahsoka stuff, like they're going to either it'll either be a blank slate or they'll figure out a way to tie it in with this other stuff. So Either way, I'm pretty excited for her to kind of get to be her own thing separate from what we've seen so far. I think that will be a a fresh breath or a breath of fresh air for all that we went through with the sequels. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, I know it's like, yeah, (laughs) yeah, basically. I mean, I I don't like think it's her fault per se. And I feel like it'd be really cool to see her character and her acting in a different light because I feel like the sequels like itself just didn't do her justice so i mean it'd be pretty cool to kind of see like in a, like having another person write her story that would hopefully mm-hmm. make it better and like more appealing hopefully yeah i don't think the sequels did any of those actors a favor outside of you know maybe kylo ren but so i'm excited for everybody involved to get to maybe have a blank slate with some some characters like that yeah, hopefully. Do you think they're going to bring back, like, some of the characters from the sequel trilogy? Because I feel like a, some of them have been, like, I will never return to Star Wars. Well, they all say that, and then the paycheck yeah. gets offered. So I think we'll see Finn back. They gotta do him right, so I think they'll offer an olive branch to him with a with a large dollar amount next to it. And, I mean, not to, like, say he's not doing anything right now, but you seen him doing anything lately? Nope. Yeah, I mean, sure. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would like to see. I know a lot of people like want to see him as a Jedi and stuff, and kind of fulfill that. Okay, so you're you're on that wave. Oh yeah, I don't care if Poe Dameron comes back or not. Like, I, I think he's a cool character, but I'm a lot more interested in the Finn as a Jedi arc more so than Poe like being a Resistance pilot. Like, yes. I'm sure they'll figure something if he wants to come back, but he actually is working now, so I don't know. 
Yeah, I mean, he's doing a lot, too, like, with Moon Knight and stuff, so I don't know, like... Dune. Yeah, so I feel like his schedule is definitely pretty busy, but I haven't seen right. much about, like, what Finn's been doing and stuff like that, but, I mean, they would definitely have to throw a lot of cash his way, I think, to get him to come back, because he's been very distasteful of, you know, Star Wars yes. in the media recently, yes. so, I don't know, it'd be interesting to see, and I wonder if they would, like, kind of bring Adam Driver back with, like, some Kylo Ren flashbacks, or, like, maybe has a Force ghost, I have no idea. That'd be cool, I don't know if he would agree to it, but I would love to see it. Yeah, I would like to see it. I know that you you're a fr like a fan of oh, Raylo. He's yeah, not of Raylo. Of I'm a fa I'm a fan of Kylo Ren. Um, okay, the Raylo thing, little <laughs> yeah, a little cringy. Um, I'm okay with the dynamic of the two of them together. Like as far as they did great together, but mm -hmm. as far as like the the side of the fan base that wants them to like be a couple, I'm okay with that not happening. <laughs> yeah. It almost kind of seemed like initially they were setting up like Finn and Ray to kind of have oh, this yeah. like thing. And then it like shifted to like Kylo. And I was like, what just happened? So was, I don't know. I feel like, horrible. yeah, <laughs> I was like trying to just insert a love story. It doesn't feel like it needs to happen. And then he was like, I have to tell you something. And then we never figured out like what it was that he was going to tell her. And then she just, yeah. you know, was with Kylo. I, I don't know. The sequels is definitely a whole other rabbit hole we can go down. But I guess we'll just start with kind of how your love of Star Wars originated. What kind yeah. of got you to be a Star Wars fan? Yeah, so as a kid, I was six-ish when The Phantom Menace came out, which is like prime time for getting into toys, you know, like as a yep. six-year-old. So everything media-wise was just like Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. The, the toy owls were all Star Wars, like the the kids meals with star wars toys like if you went to a fast food place so i want to say like the action figures and stuff got me in i remember like we would go to the movie store back when those existed and i was a kid and i would pick out like a star wars vhs so got to see that and then when the prequels came out i actually got to see attack of the clones in theaters so that was my first star wars movie in theaters and then I've seen everyone in theater since then. I got to see Revenge of the Sith twice. That was pretty cool nice. as a fifth grader to get to see something yeah. twice in theaters. So ever since the prequels, I've been like all on board. Nice. Okay. Was there anything like in specific that kind of drew you to it? I mean, I know having like cool toys and stuff as a kid yeah. is like always a bonus, but like, was there something specific about Star Wars that you were like, this is so cool? Yeah, I mean, there's so many characters, and, like, it's relatable characters, too. Like, you can you can yep. see a lot of real life in the characters. And so, watching Luke Skywalker, watching Anakin Skywalker, it was just easy to fall in love with that. And then, like, all the action, of course, the story. I, mean, I don't think I really understood the story as a kid as much as I do now. But it, it's mm -hmm. enough that, like, anyone of any age can pick it up and watch it and be cool with what's going on. So... I say between all the action, the characters, lightsabers are awesome, obviously, and then the toys and stuff. So all of that just kind of drew me in. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely agree with that. I feel like when I was younger, I like loved Star Wars and like I would just watch it like for whatever reason. And as I've gotten older, I like rewatch and I'm like, there was so much deeper things to yeah. this than I had realized as like a little girl. So I feel mm -hmm. like it's definitely interesting that like when I do rewatch it, there's like a whole bunch of other deeper meanings and like, you know, like I don't even know what they're called, but like themes possibly oh, or yeah, whatever. Sure, yeah. Like that are kind of like intertwined into each movie yeah. and the characters and like I didn't really get that when I was younger. I was just like, oh my God, like they're fighting, like there's yeah. lava, like this is so cool. Like there's clones mm -hmm. and gunships. And like, then I've learned like the relationship between Anakin and like, you know, the pull that he had to like with the light and dark side, like it's so deep. And I just mm -hmm. totally did not get that when I was younger. But well, and too, like you can look on YouTube and like you look at a lot of the content creators, especially like that we're all affiliated with, we're all mm -hmm. relatively like the same generation for the most part, if not the same yeah. age, but like the same generation. And so we all grew up as kids on the prequels for the most part. And now like we're adults and we're like, let's dive into the lore on all this. And so it's really cool to see that, that we're all like kind of grew up into that. Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, it's definitely interesting too. I think I saw, there was like some YouTube like video that it was like an interview 
and honestly i think it was one of tony's like sith talks and he was talking to a gentleman that like grew up with the older movies and he was like it's definitely Mm -hmm. when you ask people what their favorite movie is and like what their favorite it always is based off the generation that they came from and i was like honestly it's a good point so like people our generation we always gravitate towards the prequels i feel like and they always grad like kind of gravitate towards the ot trilogy so Mm. i mean it's definitely very interesting what I was going to say, I was eating lunch uh, today with uh, my pastor at church and his kids. They're all like, you know, eight and under. And so we're at this restaurant and The Force Awakens is on TV and they're going <laughs> nuts. They're like, oh, there's Ray, there's Kylo Ren. And, and that's how this generation is. They're going to like gravitate towards those movies because that's what they grew up with. So it's cool to see even like if, I mean, the original trilogy folks, they weren't thrilled with the prequels, you know, like it, yeah. they complained a lot about that as well. And and we like the prequels and we're not big on the sequels per se. And, and another group is. So that's kind of how these things go, I think. Yeah, but there's always something for everybody. And, you know, yeah. that's what I love about Star Wars is you don't have to love something, but you can just like understand like it, it's Star Wars at the end of the day. So mm-hmm. kind of, you know, just accept it. So I guess as a prequel fan, is one of your favorite movies one of the prequel movies? So no, it's not. Um, oh, growing wow. up, my favorite movie was Revenge of the Sith. It was like oh. what, like the greatest movie that had ever happened. You know, when I when I figured out that critics hated it, I didn't understand. But <laughs> but um, now, so on on the podcast that I do with with Kevin on Force with Friends, we watched all of the Star Wars one through nine. And like tried to weave it together as as like, okay, let's pick these themes all the way throughout versus just let's sit down and watch a movie. So watching it one through nine, my favorite movie actually turned out to be Return of the Jedi. It used to be Empire Strikes Back and I have changed it over the last few months. So Return of the Jedi is my new favorite Star Wars movie at the moment. Okay. I mean, Return of the Jedi is a good movie. I actually saw that yes. last May 4th in theaters, which was, oh, like, that's cool. so cool. Yeah, because yeah. I've only watched it, like, VHS, like, when I was, like, mm-hmm. younger, and now it's on Disney Plus and whatnot, but yeah. I feel like nothing beats getting to see it in the movie theater, because I never had I wasn't even, like, probably a thought in my parents' brain at the time when that movie came out. Oh, yeah, so, for sure. <laughs> 100%. And so, like, getting to actually experience that and have that experience of seeing, like, the original trilogy, like, the Return of the Jedi in theaters, I thought it was so crazy so i can see where you're coming from revenge i mean revenge of the sith is definitely my favorite movie but i feel like return of the jedi is very close so yeah i think revenge of the sith would be three for me as far as looking at all of them but Uh for sure growing up it was easy number one okay so would you i guess if you're gravitating towards return of the jedi is luke your favorite character or do you have a different favorite character no, Return of the Jedi culminates Anakin's story. So I'm an Anakin guy all the, all the way through. So I th- I look at the first six as Anakin's story. Uh, Luke is in a few of them, but it, it actually wraps Anakin's story up pretty nicely. So that actually helped me a lot as well as far as liking it more. It was like, oh, my favorite character, his his story kind of ends, ends here. So yeah essentially i mean he'll always be there as a force ghost and stuff so you probably really enjoy getting to see anakin in the ahsoka series loved it it was incredible (laughs) i know like you did too it was probably probably the best star wars thing of last year that happened like without a doubt probably the best star wars thing that's happened since rogue one maybe or mandalorian rogue one one of those two i think it's great yeah, it was fun, especially that episode five. I would watch that over and over. And like, if I just have nothing else to watch, I'm going to put it on. Like, it was just yeah. so amazing getting to see like the Clone Wars flashbacks and mm-hmm. like young Ahsoka and Anakin again. Like, I thought that was like, cr- and like the work that they did on it. Like, I thought him oh, kind of like yeah. transitioning between Anakin and Vader and then Anakin and Vader. Yes. I was like, I was like, what? Like, who did? Like, that is insane. Like, I thought that that was some of the best, like, cinematography, filming, whatever you want to call it. It was amazing. So, well, And lore-wise, I think they're going to explore it a lot, too. But, like, this Anakin that's the chosen one, and, and everyone kind of thinks he's, like, the father now as well. Mm-hmm. So kind of balancing the light and the dark. So the fact that you see him just going all on Anakin all in on vader at the same time i think that's going to be a cool dynamic to to explore that hey i can be either because i'm the chosen one so i think that's going to be cool to see yeah i definitely speculate he's the father i mean we already know ahsoka is the daughter 
do you yep who would you say the sun is i feel like that is like so up in the air yeah so if that's the route they go i mean it'll be interesting to see because could it be a new character could they like throw balin in on that like i i don't know but for sure ahsoka is gonna assume that role and yeah. then obviously anakin like we're all pretty confident he's gonna be the father unless he ends up being the son somehow and they loop something else in on top of the father but we'll know in a few years for sure that's for yeah definitely because i know ahsoka too that's yeah. kind of where or ahsoka one that's where it ended off and that's kind of where they're gonna pick up i feel like with ahsoka too because we yeah. left off balin standing on the statue and it's pointing somewhere so i'm yeah. kind of just wondering like is that what you know, season two is going to kind of focus on is that like, you know, furthering the Mortis arc and maybe unlocking like Abeloth. I've seen that yeah. a lot. So, I mean, I don't know. It's definitely very interesting. Did you see the sketch that Dave posted on his like Instagram where it's like um, Ahsoka and Sabine standing there as well? So yep. I think that's probably where we're going to pick up at is Ahsoka and Sabine somewhere around there. And it's probably going to be the greatest Star Wars stuff that that Disney has produced when we get that, I think. Yeah, I definitely hope so. Like, I, I almost kind of feel like it is kind of teasing that they're going to follow Balin, like kind of see where mm -hmm. he's going. But then I'm almost kind of like, you know, now that he's gone, you know, the actor, like, what are they going to do with Balin's character? Like, do you yeah, think they're going to put a new actor? Out. Yeah, they're going to figure something out. But I just wonder what that's going to mean for season two, because he, I feel like, really made season one for me. I'm assuming they'll recast. Uh, they could really pay a lot of money and, and deep fake him. Um, that'd cost a lot, though. It, so, yes. yeah. unless they just like deep fake enough to kill him off and then go from there. I mean, they could probably do that. I mean, they've been doing a lot of like aging and stuff, and they did like Luke and Mandalorian made him like very yeah. young. So, yeah. I mean, it might be possible. So, I mean, it's a, it's a good yeah, guess. Yeah, they could do it. But I would I would lean towards a recast, probably. Okay, yeah. I feel like that's where it's kind of heading, but we'll see. Definitely very excited for that. So we've got your favorite movie, favorite character. Do you have a favorite show? Yeah, I kind of go back and forth on this one. Um, as a whole body of work, I would say The Mandalorian, just because it's thrown, like, you've got Book of Boba Fett from it, you've got Ahsoka from it. Uh, I mean, it's pretty good. Season three, I know a lot of people didn't like it. Um, I'm, I'm in that camp as well. I don't think it was excellent by Mandalorian standards. Yeah. Had some high points, but, like, season one and then season two, especially of The Mandalorian, that was, like, peak viewing experience, just tuning in every single week. Um, Ashley and I would get up at, like, 5 30 in the morning to make sure we were ready in time to watch the Mandalorian before we had to leave for work at like 6 30. So it was, uh, we were committed to the Mandalorian and I don't, there's not many things that will like get me up at 5 30 excited outside of that. So I'll give it to Mando for that one. And then Ahsoka would be number two. Okay. No, no, like the animated shows kind of top that list, like very live action based. Uh, yeah, well, I'd say Rebels would be the next one, probably. Rebels or Kenobi. Rebels is excellent. It's just mm -hmm. like with the animated, you get some episodes that don't really matter, like yeah. probably more so than not. But if you take like the 20 best Rebels episodes, I'd put them up against anything. Yeah, okay. I can see that. Yeah, they definitely have a lot of filler episodes, especially with like Clone Wars and like even yes. Bad Batch season one and two. There was definitely like the side missions for Sid and stuff that Sid. I felt like yeah <laughs> so i mean if they didn't do filler episodes i feel like it would be like totally different but i mean you gotta have those like side quests that kind of build the character and like show you a little bit of a different side of them but they're not yeah. always necessary so yeah i try not to be too critical because i know like i'm i'm like a 30 year old watching an animated series so like i understand their demographic but at the same yep. time it'd be cool if they made an animated series geared towards adults as well but i suppose that's what we would call live action series <laughs> yeah i mean i enjoy the animated i initially yeah. i was like no it's for kids blah, blah blah and then i started watching them for whatever reason i mean i watched like bits and pieces of the clone wars when i was younger yeah. like on tv but i never like fully sat down and like watched every single episode season by season and then i finally did and i was like oh my god like i get that this is like animated and it's for kids and stuff but like so it's like kind of deep 
<laughs> like for uh, the Clone Wars for sure has some oh, real 100%. deep arcs. Uh, yeah. It's like just kind of little bits and pieces here and there. So I don't know if you remember Disney Plus a few years back leading up to the final season, they did like an essentials playlist where you could get caught up on oh, all yeah. the important Clone Wars stuff. So I probably watched like 30 something episodes through that, however so much it ended up being. And it's incredible when they highlighted it for you. So yeah, I mean, it's there's good Star Wars themes in all the animated stuff. Yeah, definitely. I like when they do that and kind of like per in preparation for like shows and stuff, because I think they did that for the Ahsoka series. They did. I think. Yeah. And I, I like kind of watched and kind of like nitpicked through some of those. And I was like, you know what? Mm -hmm. This is like, I really appreciate that they do that because then you don't have to watch a whole season or like seasons of certain things. So, yeah, it's always for a sure. plus. OK, I agree. so. Yeah, definitely. And then you sent me some images of your collection. So yeah. we'll take a look at those. Let's see what we got here. Yes. So walk me through it. What are we what are we looking at here? So picture uh, on the left, that is all of my Funko Pops and and other stuff. You can see it behind me as well. So started off with one shelf and then uh, just kind of kept growing from there. Got a few Funko Pops for sure. Um, and then the top is kind of some miscellaneous stuff as well. Mm -hmm. So I've got my movie posters. I bought those when I was in college. They were selling them at like Books A Million or something like that, yeah. maybe. So I picked those up, had them in my apartment at college. I've got some Legos up there. I've got a couple Disney lightsabers. You can see Patrick's photo way up there in the corner. Uh, those are awesome from Poptography. And then on this side closest is the Galaxy's Edge, those little mini bust. I love those things. I just started getting them this year. And mm -hmm. so it's like a random thing in a box. And then my collection is actually kind of tiered off as well. So the, the furthest one away is like Grogu, then the Mandalorian under that, then Book of Boba Fett under that, and then Kenobi under that. And then theology textbooks under that, which is a little less exciting than, than the other. But um, the next row is Ray on the top, other sequel characters under it, Rogue One under that, and then GameStop under that. The next one is Vader, the Target Retro series. A little bit of a hodgepodge of things under that. It's kind of prequel era stuff. Mm -hmm. And then under that is Ahsoka-ish. So I've got like a Balin Ahsoka Chopper, got the 332nd Trooper, and then that Rebels uh, Thrawn there. And then I've got the Gals of the Galaxy up top over here. And then the original trilogy, um, some random stuff under it, like Pops I haven't unboxed yet. And then an empty shelf under it, which is also uh, not uh, not unboxed Pops. So that's kind of my storage. And then when I get to where I have stuff for it, I'll put it there. Okay. Yeah, I, I like um, your setup. You've got, you know, the box is there, but a lot of them are out of box, which is cool. Oh, yeah. I'm a big fan of out of box. Do you have like a favorite Funko Pop line? Like, yes. So the currently the retro series, those Target oh. ones. I love those. And actually, I think I have all of them, too. So that's like one of the few sets that I have all because there's not too many of them, I guess. Yeah. So Really like those. I bought them all in the store and just never got Vader. So it took me like two years to finally get the Vader. I, it was when I would only buy pops in person. Now I order them. Mm -hmm. But um, so I like went to a Comic Con to get that. So that was that was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's my favorite one. I think line wise, that's my favorite. Gotcha. Yeah, I love. I'm a huge fan of those. I have all eight of them. I don't have the Boba Fett comic cover though. Oh, that, that was does like, exist, doesn't it? Yeah. So that's the only okay, one that so I, I don't have that one. one. Yeah. I've got the Luke. Okay. He's in the corner there. But I I forgot about that Boba Fett. Was that a Walmart exclusive? I think so. Yeah. I think so. I like my never Walmart see anything slacks. in Walmart. Yeah, my Walmart is absolutely trash. I never I won't even get into that because it's absolutely terrible. And then well, is that has your major domo and um, a Phoenix Shand? That's the only Star Wars pops they have right now. And the, and the that's boxes right? have changed colors. They've been there so long. That's terrible. Yeah, most of them like when I go, they're like beaten up or it's like they have yeah. very little Star Wars ones. I mean, I've seen major domo at Ross for like three ninety. Yeah, so. yeah, he's there now. 
yeah so ross has been crazy i see you've got some of the um vintage series on the right there are those from yeah Ross? those are so this uh little desk here um this was my work from home desk um eons past and then i got a new desk and so that became my wife's little cricket desk so she put like a white cover over it and then i got a standing desk so now she has the nice desk and i got this back to be my random junk desk so that's what I build Legos on. I put stuff on it that I don't know what I'm going to do yet. So I've got like a lightsaber from Sabres Pro there. Um, those TVCs from Ross. There's a Funko board game on there. Yeah. So stuff I'm not quite sure what I'm doing with yet. I put it there until I figure out. Gotcha. Yeah, I have like a little corner that I've got like a bunch of random okay. stuff in that I'm just like, mm, I need to figure out what I'm going to do with these. But for now, they look good right there on the, in a pile. So, yes, yeah. got to get creative. I just got rid of like 25 pops. Uh, I took them to a really? comic book shop. And so that whole table was just full of stuff I was getting rid of for like a week or so. So it finally I can see what's on it now, which is nice. Nice. So you kind of like kind of thinning the collection a little bit or just trying to make space for new pops? A little bit of both. So um, I don't know about you, like when you started collecting and everything, but when I started, it was like, oh, if there's a Star Wars pop, I'm going to buy it. And so I had a lot more, I guess, than I needed or wanted. And so the last few weeks, I've really been thinning it out. I've sold maybe five or six on Mercari and had another like 20 something that just never sold. So I just took them to offload them. So Going to MegaCon next weekend, hoping maybe to have a little cash once I get those appraised from the guy and then go buy some more junk with it, I guess. <laughs> nice. Yeah, there's a there's been a few times where I've kind of like looked at my collection and because, yeah, when I first started collecting, anytime I saw something or like I thought it was a good price, I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm buying it. Like, I just yep. didn't even care. But there's been a few times where I've like kind of like reappraised, like looked at my collection. I've been like, you know what? I don't really need these pops. And sometimes like I'll just do like a giveaway, but I've definitely sold a few off to like comic shops or I've traded them for something that I do want. But it definitely happens. I mean, that's probably the biggest mistake that I made when I first got into collecting is if I just saw a pop, I, I wanted it. Like if I knew the character, I was like, I've got to have that. And then uh, now I've got like eight Grogu's and like five Bogotans and I'm like mm, I need to like chill out a little bit I think so it happens. exact same thing here like in y'all's y'all's podcast uh the the collecting podcast the pop is it popcast is that right popcast um, yeah my favorite episode is where y'all went through like the beginners for collectors because I was like oh I did every one of those beginner mistakes <laughs> that y'all were talking about so yeah, that was a, a very enlightening podcast. If, if y'all haven't checked that one out, shameless plug for Lex's other podcast. <laughs> I'll drop the description down below. But yeah, I totally, I texted <laughs> them. They were like, what do you think we should do for this week's episode? And I was like, honestly, I think like a really good thing to talk about is like, you know, beginning like our collections and like mistakes that we made that we wish people would have told us when we got into collecting and I kind of just was go we were just brainstorming we had like a whole list and we were just adding stuff to it and it was definitely a very fun episode I definitely really enjoyed that one so yeah, it was good made me realize I wasn't like alone on an island yeah. and that there was definitely a lot of other people in the same boat as me when mm -hmm. they first got into collecting so made me feel a little bit better but yeah Definitely wish I kind of knew some of that stuff beforehand, but For sure. all I can do is share my wisdom. So. Well, if I had seen that podcast three years earlier, it would have saved me a lot of money, probably. <laughs> 100%. So, I mean, hopefully we've saved someone out their money, but yeah. I know it wasn't wasn't us. <laughs> yeah. We're like the trial, trial and error. Oh, 100%. I know Tony sold off. He just sold off a bunch of his yeah. Funko Pops. So I feel like it's definitely like an ebb and flow for collectors. You know, you go through periods mm -hmm. where you want them and then you kind of make room for something new. And it's it's a whole, it's a cycle. We all go through I bought it, I some like. from him that he's getting rid of. So <laughs> Yeah. There was a few that I saw, but I was like, I think I have like most of these. So, but yeah. it's fine. And then you, you are going to Megacon. Sunday, yeah, right? Yeah, going uh yeah to the Sunday. So we're uh we're going to head down. It's going to be my first big con that I've gone to. Like I've been to a couple like collector cons where there's like, mm -hmm. you know, 200 people at it or something, but not quite to this level. So I'm pretty excited to see it. Gotcha. Are you both going like you and Ashley? Yeah, so uh we're going to be uh traveling around that weekend and so we're going to be uh 
both go into it. She's like way into Harry Potter and Doctor Who. So there's kind of some stuff for her there as well. Plus she likes Star Wars, just not quite as much as like all of our group does, but she's into all of it. So she's pretty excited too. Awesome. Yeah, I saw I was looking through like prior to this, I was making like a video kind of like looking through like the schedule and stuff. And they do have a decent amount of like Harry Potter stuff. They have some Doctor Who panels. They're doing like a Harry Potter like sort. I think on Sunday there's like a sorting hat like thing where you could like get. Yeah, so I would definitely like check the schedule out because there was like a few Harry Potter things that I was like, because I like Harry Potter. I mean, it's definitely not Mm -hmm. like my main thing, but I was like, oh, my God, like, should I just go get like sorted into a house? Like, that would be crazy. So I have to tell her that may like buy me some good graces if if she gets to do that. So (laughs) totally. I mean, there's I'm bringing my sister and she's like Mm -hmm. she she collects Funkos, but she's very much into stitch she likes star wars but she likes the stitch pops so she'll like Mm -hmm. go to go with me to like the conventions especially in the orlando area because that's where she goes to school and she's like so excited to go to megacon she's like i wonder if i'll see some stitch funko pops and like oh she's like so excited so it's a it'll it'll be a very fun experience i'm definitely very excited it's my first megacon so yeah so yeah same here i'm I'm pretty excited that I'm going Sunday as well, because on top of like loving to collect things, I'm just like the cheapest person that's probably ever lived. And so the last day of all these cons, I have learned that people are trying to move their stuff. So hoping to sneak up on a couple deals as well. 100%, especially like towards the last few hours of the con. Like if you walk up, they'll totally just give you a good deal on it because they don't want to bring it back. And that was something I didn't learn until probably one of the last few conventions that I went to because I just happened to go to the Sunday because I don't have classes on Monday and I was like they were like oh yeah like uh, I'll do like 45% off I was like 45% off like give it to me so yeah yeah I have you ever been to the Funko Pop Con when it happens in Orlando it's like kind of a smallish one they do it at the double tree next to Universal I haven't so Tony sent it to me it's so like it's very concentrated like Funko Pops just wall to wall in the one of the little conference areas. I got four of the. Do you remember the collectors bounties? Like I wasn't collecting when those came out, but they, you know, they they got a sticker on them. So it was like the mm-hmm. Alea Secura. There's a Lando yes. and IG Eleven. A few of those. I got four of those pops for twenty dollars total. Like towards the end, they he was the guy was trying to sell them for like ten bucks each or twelve each, and I was like, I got twenty bucks. Do you care if I just pick four of these out? And he was like, Yeah, man, that's fine. So I got yeah. like four collectors bounties for twenty dollars total. <laughs> nice. That's yeah. I mean, that's always the I always try to pull that. I'm like, Oh well, I've only got twenty dollars in my wallet, and they're like, yeah. Okay, that's fine. And then like I walk away, and I've still got like you know like cash in the pocket so mm-hmm. i just I try, I try to do some tricks and trades while i'm there and try to finagle because i've learned if you have cash you can usually get away yeah. with it but not always so much with like card and stuff but yeah i that would be interesting when do you when's the next one do you know i don't know i was looking the other day it used to be so last year it was like quarterly so like march june september and december or something like that Mm -hmm. but i haven't looked this year yet so i went last march i think okay so keep an eye out for that one that sounds interesting like a whole funko pop con that'd be sick it was it was good it was a good time okay cool then i also got these pictures so like a little bit closer up of your collection i do love your grogu setup (laughs) like i love him but i just like, as much as I want different characters of him, they keep giving me ones that I, like, really want. Like, I, the other day, I was like, oh, I'm tired of Grogu Poswell. And then they released the one where he's, like, with the droid Smith. And I was like, yes, ah. like, that, I'm getting like, that one. Oh, 100%. <laughs> but that's, on, just, that's an Amazon exclusive, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'll snag that one for five bucks, too, because they always drop those real low. Oh, 100%. And then you yeah. have been getting into Legos. I've noticed yeah. that. You're definitely a Lego guy or becoming one. To. Yeah. Legos are fun. Yeah. So, yeah, I've uh, BD1, you see up there. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the first Lego I bought as an adult um, that I, I still have in my possession. So BD1 w- took a lot of patience. That's a hard one to jump in on your first build yeah. ever. And so that kind of scared me away from a bit but yeah i've got a few of the helmets which Mm -hmm. aren't as difficult but still take some time but i've really got into the micro fighters lately because it takes like 10 minutes to build those so i like those i got some little display stands that just came in the mail so i'm gonna 
put them on those. And then there's a few cool ones coming out this year as well of the micro fighter and poly bags too. So those are my speed. Yeah. They're definitely like a lot tinier, very much easier kind of build techniques. I kind of like the helmets cause they're very modular, but like mm-hmm. when I built like the Stormtrooper, and like, I even see you have the red five, like when they're all like white yeah. or even like the Darth Vader yes. being all black. And then you're tra- trying to like get these, I'm like, Oh my, like this, like, like when I mess up, I don't even know till the end. And then I, there's like a hole and I'm like, that just does not look right. But it's because I have like no color to base it off of. Like it all just looks the same color. So they're definitely, they're fun, but they can, they're a little tedious. Vader broke me. Like yeah. absolutely broke me. Red five wasn't bad. Uh, Cause it's like, it's the easiest helmet to build because it's hollow yeah. on the inside. But some guy on Instagram, I put up a picture on it. He's like, you got one spot in the wrong place. And I'm like, oh, okay. So like some guy kind of corrected me one time and it was, I had no clue. So he was right. But yeah, that Vader went up being all black pretty much all the way through outside of like a few green pieces. That was yep. pretty tough. Yep. Yeah, that one I really struggled with. I really struggled with the Stormtrooper one too. Like when it's oh, yeah. all pretty much monochromatic. I really because you have to like almost kind of get the pieces to where it's like almost forming like a head and you know I'll like put the pieces together and I'll look at it and I'm like this side does not look like this side like what did I do wrong and then I have to figure out which side it is that I messed up and then figure out what it is that I messed up and I'm like oh my god like this is it the helmets get to me the the Vader got to me definitely so you're not you're not alone yeah Ashley keeps asking why I don't want the Mandalorian helmet. I'm like, it's the, it's all one color. Like yeah. she, you must not have witnessed me building those five bags of Darth Vader because it was stressful. So that's why I don't have the Mando one is it's all silver. Yeah. And some, um, I mean, that one was like a pretty, I feel like it was very similar to the Boba Fett one, Okay, but yeah. it is monochromatic again. So those I did just like Boba Fett. Made- yeah, I mean, it's definitely very similar, I felt at least, but when they're all like the same color, it's just so difficult for me. I don't know why, yeah. but it sucks. And same. I only see one fig pin. Are you like stri- like kind of moving away from fig pins? Yeah, I d- dropped a couple of those off as well at that comic book shop. But Five Below has them now, so <laughs> I, mean, I want the R two D two, and I don't, I don't really want the Bad Batch one because they only have like Wrecker. I think yeah. if they had all of the Bad Batch, I would consider getting all of them just for it being a set. But yeah, the only one I have now is it's an R two and Grogu that's like a Disney Parks exclusive, and I got it at the Character Warehouse for like three bucks. So nice. I held on to that one, and then. If I get that R2 at five below, that will probably be my, you know, stopping point. I kind of did the same thing with those. Like I kept finding them at GameStop for a few bucks and I just kept buying them. And then I was like, ah, I don't really know what to do with these. Yeah, I would like to see the Bad Batch as fig pins because like I don't have their Funko Pops. I don't know why, but I just haven't gotten around, I guess, to collecting them. But I feel like having them in fig pin form would be cool. Like, you know, it's like yeah, different. I- the fig pins are super cool. It's just like, they're kind of hard to find in person as well. Yeah. So, and I, and I prefer to like, you know, be holding something and buy it. So that's, that's kind of my reservation there. But yeah, I only have one Bad Batch Funko too. Yeah. I mean, I've seen them at like FYE and stuff, but it's like always the same ones over and over. It's like the Fennec Shand or the Dark Trooper. And I'm like, mm, I really don't think I want those fake pins. So I feel like they're definitely harder to find in person than Funko Pops sometimes. But yeah, the fake pins are cool. You got me into those. So. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, it's okay. My bad. When I go to like, yeah, when I go to Disney and stuff, I'll go to like the pin trading and I'll go to like kind of yeah. see what they have. And sometimes they have some cool stuff. Like I got the, um, they had like an Ahsoka and Anakin Clone Wars one. Mm-hmm. So that was like a Disney park. So I got those. And then it's kind of just like spiraled. Like I found a few at like conventions and stuff. Like there was a Grogu one and I was like, mm, that's so cute. So yeah, <laughs> got you've it. got some cool ones. You've got all the Rebels ones, right? Yeah, so I ordered the Rebels ones on, like, this website, and they had all the Ahsoka ones, too, and I was like, I love, well, I'm going through this, like, phase where I just want all things Rebels, so as soon as I saw they were doing that, I was like, "Mm, might as well, like, just, and then it's kind of spiraled, so, yeah. I will say, if I ran across stuff like that in person, I would for sure have more of them. I kind of got lucky that I just had a few Mandalorian ones, because... Mm -hmm. 
to me, like I got, I got so much Mandalorian stuff, like kind of overkill. I mean, I got a picture behind me over there. It's like a Mandalorian one. So it was easier to get rid of those. But if I had bought like the return of the Jedi ones that recently came out or any Mm -hmm. of those rebels or Ahsoka ones, I would easily have those displayed still. Yeah, definitely. I totally get it. And then you've got some Funko sodas. Sorry. And that's your (laughs) fault as well. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so uh, I got three of those, and those are actually my favorite things to get right now, and I think it's kind of because they're like a treat. Um, at a, in uh, Northeast Florida, there are like no Star Wars Funko sodas anywhere in person. I don't know what the deal is. It's good for me that there's not because I have way too many of them, but yeah, y'all sent me uh, Padme, or was it Darth Maul? I, Padme, I, I think. Okay, yeah, so then I ordered Darth Maul on like that Funko birthday sale, and then I had some free Mercari money, so I got uh, Luke Skywalker off there. Nice. Yeah, it's a slippery slope. I mean, I guess we went one for it one. Is. You got me into uh, fig pins. I get you into sodas. So. So. I'm still on the good end of that because you've bought a lot of fig pins. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I definitely. But I love the sodas. I feel like they're just like a cool little, like, they're like cool little tiny characters. Like they're smaller than a Funko Pop. Mm-hmm. And like, I feel like they definitely really kind of capture the character like in a small form. And then the chance of like getting a chase, I feel like is yeah. always really cool. Cause I feel like I don't really get that with Funko Pops. Like I've never like walked into a GameStop and been like, oh, like, let me see if I can find a chase. Cause I know it's not going to be there. Like I just oh, yeah. don't yeah. even get my hopes up. So like if I do get a chase, I have to purchase it like from someone else and most of the, like there really isn't too many chases that are star wars so yeah. i feel like there's only like a handful maybe so i feel like the chance of a chase through a soda is like my little like you know yeah and the star wars chases haven't been incredible lately either like Cobb vanth i mean of all the people you could have chased like why'd you do it with him i don't know the bo katan was pretty cool though yeah, the one that I really like is the Iden Versio one from like Battlefront. Yeah, that's probably my it. yeah, that's probably my favorite yeah. chase. I mean, there's really not many. There's like a porg with his mouth open and the Cobb and Bo Katan, but I think other than that, there's really I think there's also like a glow in the dark, like Darth Vader with a candy cane. But yes, there's really there not is. many. So it's Yeah. I think so. uh you ever at uh Vineland at the outlet mall in Orlando? Um, I don't know if you've ever been to that one. It's the one next to Disney Springs, kind of. It's like on the other side of the road. There's mm-hmm. these people that have like a Funko Pop stand in the middle. You know how like they have the little stands in the middle at the outlet malls. And this this one person has one. And they've got like a top shelf of a few Star Wars chases on the top. So every I look at them, I'm like, oh, I could spend 30 and get one of those, but I never do. Yeah, I mean, it's just not like, it's not like they're so crazy that like you have to go out and find the chase like, some of them are just, like, they're very mid. Like, compared to other lines and stuff with, like, Marvel and the anime stuff, like, their chases, I feel like, are so cool. Ours are, like, very mid, but... Anime fine. gets all the chases. Like, yeah. I and I'm not into that, so I don't really understand that world, but they get a lot of chases, I see. Because I'll see them when I'm at um, Hot Topic. They have, like, you know, Hot Topic will put chases out every morning yep. uh, on, like, Tuesdays or something. At least the one that's in town here. And they always have the anime chases there. Yep. Yep. I don't know what it is, but they definitely have a lot of chases and we have like maybe a handful, less than two handfuls. Yeah. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Yeah. It's tough, but I mean, it's probably for the best, I guess, but that's fine. So those are your, that's your collection. I have some questions about your collection, I guess. Okay. When did you get into collecting? Um, it was 2019, I think. 2019 yeah i was uh we went it was either 19 or 20 i guess i had to think but either way we were at uh disney it was 2020 it was a pandemic like midlife crisis thing for me so um we were at disney like in august or something um and i was like i'm getting a funko pop i'm gonna start a collection couldn't have told you why i wanted to so i got a grogu and that kind of started an issue um and then from there i picked up like a few rise of skywalker pops because i think those were coming out at the time so like Mm -hmm. got ray and ben solo finn poe a few of those and then moved to florida and like florida is like a collector's mecca you know like you can just end up anywhere and where i was before that was certainly not the case so then it really picked up. That's when the shelves happened. Uh, it was convenient that I lived in a town with an Ikea because that, <laughs> that, that helped out a lot. So 
Yeah, I, I guess about three years now, going on four. Okay, nice. Um, would you say your primary focus of your collection is Funko Pops? Or, oh, yeah. Yeah? Is there anything, yeah, like, right you now. just want to stick with Funko? Or is there something that, like, you do want to eventually kind of venture into? So, I'm slowing down the Funkos a lot. Like, a bunch. Like I said, I just got rid of 20. I think it was four of them. I got mm -hmm. rid of 24, 25. And then I'm wanting to get more Legos. I want to buy the ghost this year. That's kind of a, of a goal of mine, maybe like around May the 4th, if it's still in stock, because I know Lego is going to do another free gift this year on May the 4th. And so that's like an easy 150 bucks to get the gift or whatever they ask for it. That will for sure get you there. Yeah. So I think I'm going to get the ghost. I've seen you, you've built it and I've seen Ricky's built it. And then the displays to put them on as well look really good. So I'm thinking that's what I'm leaning towards uh, is Lego, but I'm also getting into lightsabers as well. So uh, Sabers Pro sent me one, which was cool. I've got two from Disney, which I built, which are awesome. And then in Sabers is going to send me a Luke Skywalker one at some point. So I'm excited about that nice. as well. But now lightsabers is an expensive game to get into, but it, they're so much cooler than anything else you can get. Like, I mean, it is, it's, it's a lightsaber. So what do you do? Yep. So are you more, I guess if you are going to get into sabers, is it more replica sabers that you're going to try to get or just like kind of the regular custom sabers? Yeah. Um, whenever Disney does another round of the customs, I'll go build one. Uh, so okay. I, I built one like three years ago and then last year they, they did some more. So I went and got picked one of those up. And then when they do another one, I'll get one of those. As far as like the the other companies, I, I mm -hmm. would probably stick to replicas. I, I know a few people have the Kanan Saber. So I like that one a lot. That's probably my favorite replica that I've seen so far. I like the Revan Saber. I don't know if you've seen the replica of it. It's pretty clean Saber as well. Yep. Yeah, the Revan one is definitely pretty cool. The Kanan one is on my list i've been staring it down but i just really haven't pulled the trigger but the two that i really want that are replicas as i really want an anakin one and i want that cannon saber but the one that disney did is like black so i was like i don't really like that's not a, like like i don't know why it's black so so that's my thing with with their sabers the sabers from galaxy's edge are very cool like yeah. getting to build it great experience but when you like quality them next to other stuff, it's not close. Like everybody else does better. But I mean, just if you're getting a hilt, it's fine. But mm -hmm. yeah, the Disney Kanan's not the same as like, uh, you know, Sabres Pro, Saber Theory, any of those. Like it's not even close. Have you seen the Balin and Shen replicas? Yep. From like, like uh, Saber. Too. Yeah. Saber Theory. Yeah. Cool. The Saber Theory has some really good ones. Yeah. Those yeah. those would probably make the list as well. Okay. Yeah, I um I really do want to have the experience of building one at Galaxy's Edge. But mm -hmm. then I kind of like sit and I'm like, okay, well, for X amount of dollars, I could probably also purchase like a gold harvest or even possibly yeah. like a Neopixel for the same price. Obviously not like a replica Easily. Neopixel, because those are like four hundred dollars. But I'm almost like, do I just pay for the experience and get a mid saber or do I just pay the same price for a really dope saber with multiple sound fonts, multiple colors, but then not have that experience. So I like, I've really like teetered with that, which is why I haven't done it. I do eventually really want to do it. But every time I think about doing it, I'm like, well, I could also get this saber for the same price that does all this stuff and yeah. has a way cooler blade and like so i don't know i will say experience trumps just having an item in like nine yeah. times out of ten so i've done the experience twice so i guess they got me you know so i would say do the experience at least once but like if you're looking at the the builds they have right now and you don't really like what they have Mm -hmm. uh, wait till they do another build. Cause it's not worth spending $250 if you're just not sold on any of the pieces. And so the new ones they released last year, I really only liked the dark side one. The yep. other three or four options to me were a step down from what they had before. 
Yeah, I liked your the saber that you built. And I guess you do have a valid point because like you'll have a saber and you'll always think like, oh, I remember when I built that and always have like the memories to it, which yeah. you wouldn't have if you just purchased it from like a company. So I feel like that's definitely a valid point. You just changed my whole perspective on that. So I probably will go build a to, saber you now. Get your caber crystal too. That's cool. Yeah, you get to pick your color. Did Which one did you pick for your... You have like a light side one. Yeah, right? I've got... Um... So when I built my original one, I did like a, a High Republic one, which I thought mm -hmm. looked super cool. It's like gold and silver plated and I have a green crystal for it. And those crystals eventually quit working. I don't know if you know this, but they quit working and you just go into Galaxy's Edge and they get you a new one, which is pretty cool. So oh, really for free? Uh, yeah. Yep. You just bring in the old one and they swap it out. No questions asked. They test it to make sure it's not like a user error. And then I got a yellow one because I like the yellow blades. I think those are cool. Yeah. But then the color didn't quite turn out the way I liked it. So it's more of a display, like just have a little crystal out. And then my new yeah. one, I got a red blade with it. Nice. Because I've seen a few people, they'll like buy all the, the Kyber crystal colors and then they'll just kind of have them on display and can like swap mm -hmm. them in and out. But that's interesting. It's cool that they do kind of switch it out. No questions asked. But I wonder like yeah. why that is like they just know that it's going to stop working. Yeah, they explained it to me, like, if you see that, have you seen how the inside of the sabers are? Yeah. Like, they, they pop apart, and there's, like, a little, like, just a canister area, you mm -hmm. pop it in there, and so at some point, it can't read whatever's in there. Again, I, I don't, it's like, if you're charging somebody $250 for something, you better get lifetime kyber crystals out of it, I guess. Yeah, my buddy uh, made one for his birthday like a year or two ago and like he brought it home and then he was like trying to show me it and it, like wouldn't turn on. And I was like, dude, like what's going on? So he had like yeah. message them. They like sent him like the replacement part for it. And I was like, oh, okay. okay, but yeah, he like totally took it apart and like showed me. He's like, oh my God, this is my lightsaber. And I was like, honestly, that's <laughs> pretty cool. But then I ended up purchasing like a NeoPixel from like oh my god imperial workshops and it was like 160 dollars, yeah. and he was over here spending like 250 for it and i was like well i have a new pixel so <laughs> a lot but, better too yeah it's a nice one i mean it's probably the cheapest neo pixel that's like on the market but it was like pretty cool so we had like a little lightsaber duel and called it a day but, <laughs> <laughs> that's, cool. but that's fine and then i guess my last question is what is the most valuable piece to you in your collection Valuable piece to me. Uh, Valuable favorite, either or. For sure, that Anakin that came out a year or two ago, the Attack of the Clones Anakin, like the dual sabers. Mm -hmm. Love that pop. It's my favorite pop, hands down. Mm -hmm. uh, the Grogu pop I bought that is the first Funko pop I ever bought. That one, like, I don't love the pop or anything. Like, if I'm ranking it out of all of my Funko Pops, it's not probably in the top 50, but mm -hmm. since it's sentimental because it's the first one, I like it a lot. Um, and then my Galaxy's Edge Saber, the first one I built, I would say that one's up there too. Okay, so some, a good rotation there. I get you. Yeah. Okay, right. well, I appreciate you coming on and taking the time to do this. I know it was a little bit last minute, so <laughs> thank you. Um, no, could you like the fun. people... Yeah, absolutely. Could you let the people know one more time where they can find you, what your channel's about, your podcast? Yeah, for sure. So Padawan Pops on YouTube, uh, and the uh, podcast is Force with Friends Podcast. It's just on the Padawan Pops channel, so you can just hop over to the playlist and find it there. And those come out every Friday if everything goes as planned and then on instagram it's mainly the collection padawan underscore pops but i think if you just type padawan pops you'll find it as well awesome so thank you one more time for coming on and i will see you guys next thursday